Hello everyone. If you're struggling in Gran Turismo 7, you're spinning a lot, you can't quite get those gold licenses, you feel like you're a little bit off the pace, I really hope this video is going to be super, super, super helpful for you. My background is I was a quite fast driver in Gran Turismo Sport, winning top split daily races online, mixing it on my day with esports drivers, and I put this guy together to really explain to you the fundamentals of how to be quick in Gran Turismo 7. Gran Turismo 7 does have a different handling model to Gran Turismo Sport and if you don't drive within the parameters where you can be fast in Gran Turismo 7 you will lose a lot of time. So for this guide I've used a circuit experience at Suzuka in the Group 2 Honda NSX. It's an MR car. The MR cars are the hardest cars to drive in Gran Turismo 7 so if you can master the MR cars you're going to be pretty much good to go in everything else. This is my lap at uh, Suzuka in the circuit experience to get the gold. We're going to have a look at it here in cockpit and then we're going to have a look at it in third person and I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm doing. Now the things I want you to have a look at are the throttle and the steering because in Gran Turismo 7 the key thing to good lap time is not getting oversteer in your car. There is no slip angle in Gran Turismo 7 that you can use to get extra rotation through the corners. Now I've had to really change my driving style in Gran Turismo 7. In Gran Turismo Sport I had a quite a flamboyant driving style teasing the car to get more oversteering corners. An example is going to be this hairpin here at Suzuka. Now Gran Turismo Sport, I would be mashing the throttle about now. And you can see there just how much I pause in Gran Turismo 7. In Gran Turismo Sport, you could induce that oversteer and let it rotate you around the corner and also have that grip. If you do that in Gran Turismo 7, you're going to get so much oversteer, you're going to have to counter steer and you're going to lose incredible amounts of time because it's going to take you longer to accelerate down the straight. Again, here at Spoon, much more patient waiting a long time to get to full throttle so if you're struggling in Gran Turismo 7 with lots of oversteer look at my throttle inputs here and just how gentle I'm being we're gonna have, gonna have a look now in third person by the way I do completely mess up 130R it was my first lap here so I wasn't sure how much downforce I would have <laughs> but um, it worked nonetheless let's see how we finish lap again I'm gonna be very 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 patient much more patient Gran Turismo 4 but it's gonna be the third person view here that I think is really going to highlight this because you're going to see just how stable I'm trying to make the back end of this NSX. Let's have a look now. So this is a third person view of the same lap and I want to show you just how planted I'm trying to make the rear end of the car. In Gran Turismo Sport I would actively be trying to move that rear end around and here look through the first corner I'm really trying to do everything I can to keep the car stable and not have that back end swing out. Why? Because when that back end swings out I'm going to lose so much time counter steering and trying to get back into that window grip. I do think Gran Turismo 7 has a very simplistic um, representation of oversteer. You base, there we go. So we snapped out of it there. And you saw as soon as I snapped out of the window of grip and I had that oversteer, I immediately backed out, was on the brakes to get that grip. And I sacrificed a lot of speed in order to get back into that window. So if you're driving cars in Gran Turismo 7 and you're hearing a lot of tyre squeal, you're seeing your back end come out a lot, then that is not the fastest way to drive in Gran Turismo 7. If you're really struggling with that and you have the option to use a FF car, so a car where the drivetrain is going through the front wheels and the engine is in the front, then I recommend you do that because you're really not going to have any problems with the back end stepping out. But if you're driving an MR car or a any, any car that has the drivetrain going through the rear wheels, then you really do need to minimize that oversteer. And again here, look through speed. This is a corner where in GT Sport, I would really swing the back end out. Same in iRacing, really swing it out. And here, I'm absolutely not. I'm minimizing my corner speed and also my steering angle to the extent that I'm not going to move myself outside of that window. There is no slip angle window you can be in to enjoy the benefits of oversteer here. Oversteer is almost unilaterally a bad thing in Gran Turismo 7. And again, we're going to see here through the very last uh, chicane at Suzuka. Normally, I'd be trying to get that back end around here. But again, I'm going to try and keep that stability and maintain that traction. So this was good enough for a gold medal at um, Suzuka in the circuit experience. Again, kind of a, just a demonstration here. I'm really going to go for those ultimate times in, uh, in later videos. I've got here my assists as well to show you that um, for me, the fastest way to drive is still with default ABS, no traction control. No counseling. Basically, I don't have any assist on apart from ABS on default. Um, however, if you're really struggling with oversteer, then you might want to try traction control on and maybe setting one or two. That may help you. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Do let me know if you've got any thoughts in the comments. If you've got any other things else that you'd like me to cover in videos, um, helpful tutorials and guides, let me know. Um, because I really enjoy making these and kind of trying to share 
the driving knowledge that I built up over years of playing Gran Turismo. But that's going to be the it for me. Please do like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time.